Welcome back subscribers and welcome new viewers to September 2023 general monthly reading for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, North or South nodes of the Moon. And I want to thank each and every one of you who have subscribed, who like and share my videos because that helps my whole channel to circulate to more and more individuals who are in need of this information just like you. Okay, we have about seven, eight retrograde planets this month. We're going on right now, and I'm taping on August 30th, and we are going to have the full moon, super full moon, tomorrow in Pisces, seven degrees. And then we also have transiting Saturn is retrograde, four degrees Pisces, we also have Neptune in Pisces retrograde, 26 degrees all month long. And so all three of those in Pisces, including that super full moon is one of them, it's a huge deal because transiting Saturn, again, retrograde means we're looking back to the past, anything that we did not, for example, with Saturn, anything Saturn has to do with authority figures, okay? Has to do with our security base, and we're talking individual and as a humanity in the whole, for the whole of humanity. There we go, okay. Didn't sound right to me. Anyway, so what that means is Saturn is a very serious planet, and so retrograde, it's saying, okay, we need to Take a look back into the past and focus to find out, um, get clarification on something about authority figures. And what I see with Neptune, Neptune and Pisces, Neptune is that ethereal planet. It's fantasy, it's delusion, illusion, imagination. And so what to me is that saying, Saturn is saying, okay, let's, we are now going to take care of anything that we haven't taken care of having to do with authority figures and what we saw as truth. And again, this is individually or and as a collective, what we believe to be true from these authority figures and we're going to take a good hard look at this and we're going to bring out the details to get down and, and make sure and find out, is this real? Is this real true truth? Or is this fantasy? Is this, are, have we been deluded or deceived? Have we been believing in illusion? And so that's a major thing. And then, the super full moon is putting a huge amount of explosive, I just feel like it's explosive energy to uh, bring this stuff out in a very explosive, instantaneous, um, quick way. Well, and with Uranus conjunct um, Jupiter, both in Taurus, which has to do with values, what we value individually and as a collective, and what we have found valuable, for example, valuable information, or um, value within ourselves, well, Jupiter is going to expand that. Well, Uranus, again, is... Uh, is the planet of unexpected surprising changes. So Jupiter's going to expand, so make even bigger these changes, these unexpected surprising changes. And one I see, or maybe many I see, ha is having to do with Saturn and Neptune, as I just spoke of. So truths coming out, lies coming out, truths coming out, and us deciphering what is what's what is truly real what is the truth and what is not the truth and then pluto is in a kind um compatible supportive um energy to saturn and neptune 
to dig to the bottom, uh, to the root, with great intensity. That's what Pluto is, it's a great intensity. And no matter what happens or how these truths have to be flushed out, they're going to be, they are going to be. And Pluto, again, is retrograde. Also, in Capricorn still, it begins the month at 28 degrees and then ends the month at 27 degrees. Okay, and then another huge thing for you, Aries, is the full moon on the 29th of September because it's going to be in your sign, Aries, 6 degrees. And it's going to have a conjunction to retrograde north node in Aries and retrograde Chiron, transiting Chiron in Aries as well. So you might want to check and see all that you have in Aries and if you have anything in Libra or Libra is opposing or Capricorn or Cancer. And transiting Pluto, even though it's a far, it's not it's at the other end of the spectrum, degree-wise, it is square to that full moon on the 29th in Aries. So that is going to be a big deal for you, Aries. So anyway, you might want to check that out in your natal wheel. And then the new moon will be on the 15th, and it is 22 degrees Virgo. And we also have Mercury in Virgo, and it is retrograde right now. And it will go direct on the new moon on the 15th. Okay, that, that are, that's, that's all of the transits. <laughs> so let's, okay, so I'm wanting to pick up tarot cards first. So Aries, let's go with tarot cards for you first and see what comes up for Aries and anything that, or if this reading isn't right for you, Aries, that's okay, because you're transiting uh, planets and your natal wheel planets are going to be unique and, and individually uh, for each and every one of you. So depending on uh, where, what is most important and in your chart at the time will depend upon what area or what sign your sun, your rising, your moon, or your north or south nodes of the moon, or several of them you might want to take a look at to see what is most accurate for you this month. Okay, so we have three of cups. Look at that. So you're celebrating something. You're raising your cup to something. I'm getting now through October, actually. The end of October, I was drawn to the pumpkin, and then I thought of October. And it's time for you to have fun. I just got to. It's just time for you to let your hair down and just have a little fun and enjoy yourself because you have been working hard, Aries. Wait, let me show you. And then look at this, the Ace of Wands, look at that. So yes, you are very passionate. You are a passionate uh, um, zodiac sign, fiery. And that rings true for this month as well. In fact, you are, you, you're coming out of your shell even more because you are even more secure with yourself, more happy, more, again, because you're ready to ha enjoy yourself. You're ready to have some fun. You're ready to, to joke and be a clown I'm getting and just be the life of the party is what I'm getting for some of you. And so do it, do it. Um, you're being handed the staff or I, see, I, know, I know it's a wand, but I'm seeing it as like for the baton, it's your turn. It's your turn for the spotlight I just got, Aries. So some of you might have Pisces in your chart. You don't have to. Country living, some of you might be choosing to move into the country from the city. 
or take a trip someplace that's calm and quiet out in nature. Maybe you've been dreaming about that. That's been a desire of yours and it's coming true. Maybe you're gonna buy your own castle in the country. There's a castle in the background. What you see as your castle. And I feel like too, like, because I was, as soon as I said castle and it's on a hill, and so it's like above everybody so you can look look down and you can see, you can see everything. So your perspective or your, where you are at now, you have the ability to see everything like you haven't seen it before. And you can see the whole picture. So anything that maybe you, I just got, has eluded you, you're going to be shown that full picture this month. And your understanding, your perspective, your, uh, how you have thought about something or felt about something is going to expand. It's going to change. It's going to be increased. Wow. And that's going to make you even more joyful. It's going to free you. It's going to free you. Wow. Okay. So let's, Well, let's take some of these. I'm just being drawn to change it up a bit. Okay, what else for Aries? What do they need to know for this month? Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so amazing. What was I just saying about a higher view? Here's a higher view. That's literally what it says at the bottom of the card, a higher view. Wow. And owls, you might be hearing owls this month, you might be seeing owls this month. And to me, an owl is, it, it, it represents wisdom, it represents patience, and it also, to me, with you, I don't know if this is what the owl uh, represents, but for you in this reading, it's representing the ability to listen and truly hear in a new way, an expansive way that you've never, never heard before. And that just increases your wisdom even more. I just got your sought after, so I don't know if some of you, you have a, a job, a purpose, where you are in, in the public eye, but um, you're sought after, or you will be sought after this month. Maybe some of you, it's a new, endeavor you are um, putting out there for some of you. Some of you, it doesn't have to be, but I just got that for someone. And this is number 41 and it breaks down into a five. So five, uh, this could be your life path. This is my life path. So five, what I'm seeing for you this month is you are, you're spontaneous, you're free, and you're happy. Again, just enjoying yourself in the moment and plans, Plans go out the window, I'm getting at. That's, I just got that. Plans go out the window this month because you're into spontaneity and going with the flow. So if, if you have plans and they go out the window, you are gonna be able to go with the flow and just enjoy yourself. And maybe some of you, if that's harder for you to do, that maybe is a, a tip for you this month to be able to just do that, just let go and just, okay maybe you have Capricorn in your chart and you are a list person I'm getting for somebody but this this month throw those lists away because it's not gonna it's it's things are gonna be coming too fast and you're just in this or to be in this flow and this spontaneous um, way about you and and way of life for this month at least and maybe for longer maybe this is something new that is coming into your life, so enabling you to take a, a different perspective. And then it's gonna work for you and you're gonna love it. And I just got it's gonna change your life for somebody. 
Okay, so let's see. Okay, let's get this one. I'm also trying to get. No, we don't have that many cards, but boy, a lot of information. Okay, so what else for Aries? Okay. 17. So, yes, 17 also came in not this exact card, but the number 17. So, you can very well have something in Pisces in your chart, but this is 17. Look at that door is opening. So, you have a new opportunity, something new is coming into your life, maybe a new pet, a new animal, a new person a new experience, a new opportunity, but it's a bright future for you. And then return, for some of you maybe, what that gets me to think of is maybe something is returning for a second chance for you. It wasn't able to be fulfilled, you weren't able to accomplish it, or you weren't able to um, put it into motion, I thought. But now it's coming back around, and you will be able to have that opportunity to, depending on what this is, to have it re-enter your life. This could be a person, this could be an opportunity, experience. Um, yeah. And I'm drawn to the light too. There's a light here and it's shining down. So what I'm getting is that it's returning because now your perspective, you can see the whole picture now and you can see it differently than you did in the past. That wasn't, in, you weren't able to see it in its full entirety. And so that's why it didn't happen for you. And so now it's coming back around because now you have a, again, look at this. The light is up high. And here this owl is flying high and it says a higher view. So there again, to me, that's just reiterating why for those that you have something new or something coming back around, returning to you, it's because now you have a higher, um, a higher view, a different, a full, complete, expanded understanding or view um, and so now you're going to gain benefit from whatever is returning to you now. That's beautiful. And I'm just drawn also to the purple um, flowers. They remind me of lavender. I don't know if they are, but lavender's calming. And so I just thought this is going to be very calming and soothing for you. Maybe for someone it's a child returning. I don't know, I'm just getting, and I don't know, again, this isn't gonna be for, this is gonna be for somebody, this is a specific message. I'm getting someone had a young child, and for whatever reason, it was taken away from you, or you haven't um, been able to see them for a while, and now they're returning to you. That's beautiful. So whoever that's for, bless your heart, Okay. Okay. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, I wanted to take these. Let's see there. These are hard for me to, really hard. So let's see, what else for Aries? Whoops, that one does want to come out. Heaven on earth. So what I'm getting from that is some of you, you are desiring heaven on earth. You're creating heaven on earth. Or you now can proceed to create heaven on earth for yourself. Look at that, so beautiful. And the water. Oh, no, that's not water. That's fog. I was thinking that that was um, at the ocean. I don't have my glasses on. 
but that's beautiful regardless. And maybe some of you do. Maybe that your heaven on earth is by the ocean, by water. And it's number 11. Okay, 11 is a special number for some of you. And it says, all are invited. New earth, spirit in matter. So you are desiring or are going to start, start beginning to create your own heaven on earth. And then we have the new man. It's number nine, enlightened masculine potential. Here again, new earth, new earth. So those of you females you who are single, maybe you're going to meet a new man, a, an enlightened masculine man who is your counterpart. And for men, the men that are listening, you could definitely be that enlightened man searching for your counterpart, your female counterpart. And you've been enlightened masculine, excuse me, a true man is what I call you, true man. And you've worked hard for that. And your counterpart has done the same. Okay. And I just got to, for those of you that are together with already, together with somebody, that the masculine, you are going to be, so if you're the masculine, your female that you are together with, she is going to somehow show you or let you know how you have grown as a true man or into a true man and how much she respects and loves you for that. And then if this is the woman, of course, you, the woman, you're going to be seeing that in your man and hopefully expressing that to him. But I get you have been working hard too. Both of you have been working hard. You've been working hard to be a true woman. He's been working hard to be a true man. And that's just for those of you that are together with someone already. Okay, let's see. Okay, well, before I, I'm keeping my monthlies short. So let's get one more card or cards before I Close this reading for Aries. What else do we need to know? What planets are helping them this month? Okay, 44. This is a four and this is 40 and that makes 44 which is a master number which is another special number for you, for those that watch for signs and synchronicities. Okay, so you have first Cancer with number four and Immerse. Okay, and what I just got is Aries, this month, just go and have fun and immerse yourself in these activities, in whatever joyful, fun things, spontaneous um, things that you choose to do and enjoy doing. Go have fun. Go have fun. You've been working super hard and it's time to take a break. It's okay. It's necessary. Necessary to keep your flow for your work as well. Your purpose as well. Joy, having joy and relaxation and fun, fun times. Just immerse yourself in that, in the feeling of joy and fun and whatever that means for you. 
And then number 40 is the second house, resources. You're going to have the resources to do it. The resources are coming. You've been working long and hard. It's time for you. I was drawn to this apple and then the arrow going through the apple and I got, you're going to have a sweet month. A sweet month where possessions, resources, prosperity, abundance is concerned. Especially if you choose to have joy, let up and let your hair down and just have some fun. Let your energy flow and then watch these resources come in. Watch that. And I just had a, a joke go through my head. Resources, race horses. <laughs> anyway, okay. <laughs> well, I hope this has helped. Until next time. Bye.